What's up guys, Grim here. I apologize if my voice is a little bit off. I'm just now getting over getting sick. I had the flu and I was out for about three days. It's the first time I've been sick in, you know, almost a year or something like that. It's been a long time. But man, whenever I get sick, it lays me out for days and I was just absolutely miserable. But hopefully making the comeback here and producing some awesome riff videos for you guys all right so one of the things i want to say right at the beginning of this video to get it out of the way and get onto the topic afterwards is that we are bringing the giveaways back and we're doing them in a different way now in the past whenever i would do a giveaway video i would say hey leave a comment below blah 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 and then i will announce the winner in the next weekend video well, what happened was a lot of times I didn't end up making the next weekend video and then that giveaway just never ended up happening because I couldn't remember which video it was that I was doing the giveaway in or else I just never got around to it and it made people where they wasn't getting their prizes or else a winner wasn't even determined. Now, luckily, this was all on small things. Now, whenever there was a big giveaway, people always got a prize, uh, but on the smaller giveaways, sometimes I would lose track of it and people we can get in the prizes so it really sucked and we're changing it now so what's going to happen is in giveaway videos all you have to do is you know do your leave the comment below blah 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 all that stuff well i'm going to pick a winner in that same video actually and just message that person directly and give them their prize uh, i'm not really going to make a video announcing winners unless it's something that's really big or if it's a grim patron giveaway you know the people that actually support me on patreon.com with you know money towards the the actual uh youtube channel that is amazing that people do that and anybody that supports me with rex i'll probably throw you guys on that list for big uh big donations and stuff like that it's just amazing what you guys do to support my channel sometimes and i want to reward you guys all as much as i can so the people that are grim patrons and stuff that get the real big giveaways i yeah i'm probably going to still announce winners on that one but as far as smaller giveaways and stuff that is going to be in the normal videos i'm going to pick the winners just in the comment section below and send that person a direct message and not even worry about it after that all right so that out of the way this video we are giving away two of the anniversary snail mounts i believe they're called but it's two snail mounts all right so all you have to do is leave a comment in the comment section below this video with your character name and server smash that like button make sure you're subscribed to the channel and i will be uh picking a winner from the comment section below and sending you a message directly now make sure you are subscribed to the channel because i've had lots of people that were winners and then i would check out their channel and they didn't they wasn't subscribed to me so you got to be subscribed guys all right so this video is all about the PvP announcements that recently got made about Starfall Prophecy. Now, there's lots of good stuff. There's a few disheartening things, but we'll get to all of it, hopefully. And hopefully, I'll be able to say it in a way because I actually recorded this video before and I rambled in all kinds of different ways and it, it wasn't pretty and I ended up wanting to make it over again. So, let's go ahead and talk about it. All right, so the ELO is going to be reset at the launch of starfall prophecy now what was happening is i will say that nightmare tide brought on a whole different breed of pvp -er. now uh you had the people that uh they would just run burst specs and blow up people quite often and they ran inquisitors they ran pyromancers they ran you know uh just whatever the current burst spec was and they would blow people up and then they would post their screenshots of how many kills they got on the forums and it's been ridiculous the the time to kill in nightmare tide was extremely low the the new breed of pvpers think they are just the most amazing thing ever i mean they even say grim sucks which they forget all the piles of bodies that I left behind in Storm Legion. But, you know, I haven't been active in Nightmare Tide. And whenever I did, I was always struggling with gear and stuff. But 
if these uh, if these announcements keep going the way that they are and being in favor of PVPers, then you're probably going to see Grim basically coming out of retirement and going to be smashing a lot of these new Nightmare Tide PVPers. And you guys know these guys. I mean, I I, I can name them. And you guys would know right off the bat that these guys weren't in Storm Legion. They're the new Nightmare Tide breed PVPers that are instant burst specs. Uh, think they're the best and they're really not. Some of them are decent. Don't get me wrong on that. Some of them are good. But they're not as tough as they think they are. And they run their mouths a lot. So uh, it's the people that are always pre-mades. Always in pre-mades. And that's how they're getting their high ELOs. They have raid gear. They're always raid geared out. They're they're raiding the latest content. And then going into PvP and smashing everybody. And, it, you know, they're so easy to spot. Most of the time they're running heal specs so that they can't be held liable to their normal gameplay. And can just be relying on heals per second. And, uh, yeah. It's, it's something else. Alright, so... These people, these Nightmare Tide breed of PvPers, have amassed an ELO that is pretty high because they're pre-maiden, they're in the raid gear, they're winning matches. Well, their ELO is so high that whenever they solo queue and actually try to play like a majority of PvPers do, the people that are very good at playing... Uh, their specs and being very good with movement and stuff like that usually solo queue so whenever these high ELO guys solo queue all of a sudden they're getting matched up with a lot of people with very low ELOs because their ELO is inflated uh, and also their gameplay in their mind is inflated so what they're doing is they're hitting the forums they're saying I'm getting matched up with terrible terrible players these guys are making me lose, you know, blah, 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 all this stuff. So, Trine has listened to it. Trine is saying, we're going to reset the yellow so that you guys can have more of a chance. You can actually solo queue once in a while and not get smashed like, you know, you would normally be solo queued. And, yeah. So... Hopefully the PvP will continue to evolve in this way to where uh, these upcoming changes to will evolve to more where it was like in Storm Legion where it's not going to be instant bursts and all the crap that went on in uh, Nightmare Tide that made this new breed of PvP. It's, it's insane, these people, man. All right, so... Let's go ahead and talk about the next subject. I kind of rambled on. That's what I was doing in the first video and I wanted to start over. All right, so... The PvP content of uh, Starfall Prophecy is going to be focused around Warfronts because whenever you got open world PvP, Conquest, and all these other things that happen in uh, as far as PvP terms, yeah, sometimes things are a little bit popular. There was an era where open world PvP was doing all right. There was an era where Conquest was doing all right. Uh, and, you know, PvP kind of focus, uh, you know, swaps around a little bit on what's popular. But the thing that has always stayed consistent is that Warfronts is what is king. That is what everybody participates in significantly more than everything else uh, as far as PvP is concerned. So they're basically saying, we see that. Now we're going to focus our attention on Warfronts. Uh, you already seen uh, uh, that Trion wasn't really focusing on open world PvP anymore. They've stated uh, like all during Nightmare Tide that they wasn't going to do hardly anything for uh, open world. Uh, so dimensions and PvP dimensions and all that stuff. It's not really going to get a focus. And Conquest is not going to get focused as much anymore. It's going to be more about Warfront. So they're going to try to improve that experience quite a bit more. Try to focus the re resources on Warfronts and make them better. Alright, so uh, one of the things that they talk about is that players are kind of being spread thin with all the different warfronts uh whenever people are trying to learn warfronts uh they're just basically getting in all these different warfronts and they don't know what they're doing they're basically funneling down the middle running right into each other and not winning the matches they're not doing anything to progress their team and they're not learning they're not being any better 
and uh, so what they want to do is they want to kind of cut back on the amount of war fronts that uh, people will have available to them that way that people can learn better so uh, what they're going to do is during the weekdays starting out they're going to have four different war fronts that are going to be available which is codex black garden Blighted Antichamber, and Library of the Rune Masters. And these four is going to be, are going to be the ones that everybody is going to get whenever they queue up. So that makes it to where people can learn these maps a little bit better. They may play these maps over and over and over, but they'll learn them. And then on the weekends, there will probably be other war fronts. And they may even cycle out the original four to where people can learn four new ones at a certain point. But it's all about getting newer players to learn and, you know, improving the experience altogether to where people aren't complaining that everybody on their team doesn't know what they're doing. So, it's going to be pretty cool, hopefully. Alright, so, uh, PvP queues. Now, at the start of Starfall Prophecy, they're going to have it to where level 65 to 70 is going to be grouped into one queue. Uh, everybody is going to be bolstered up to level 70. Um, that is going to make it to where everybody can PvP all through the leveling process, which is really, really cool. Uh, I'm looking forward to that, and uh, I think I'm going to be PvPing quite a bit. There's always going to be the tick in my mind that says, go out there and do the PvE so that you can level faster, and once you're level 70, then you can focus on the PvP, but you know who knows i may pvp through the process usually i'll grind pve until i get almost to the max level and then i'll pvp for the like last half level that i need so uh we'll see how that goes uh but it gives everybody an option to where it's not just only pve for the most part all right so pvp itemization uh they are making it to where there is of course going to be a down bolster like usual so no change there except for the new warmonger items that's going to be coming in starfall prophecy will exceed that bolster so otherwise all this raid gear is going to get bolstered down warmonger gear is going to exceed that bolster to where it's going to be where pvp gear is going to be the absolute best for pvp it, yes finally finally thank you Trion. How can I thank you anymore? This is going to make it to where I can go in, I can grind these war fronts, I can work on my gear, I can get the very best gear, and then I can have a competitive edge against the people that are going to be raid geared. You know, the 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 curse during all of Nightmare Tide was the best people, well, the people that were doing the best were the raiders, the ones that were out there raiding bosses. They were coming into PvP, smashing buttons and bursting people down with burst specs and not having to time their burst or anything. And they were able to do it because of the raid gear. So yes, this is going to be so much nicer. Warmonger gear is going to be king. Now, the thing that should be said is there will be new Warmonger gear that's going to be level 70. So your current Warmonger gear, if you have some, you're not going to be able to upgrade that to the next tier. You're going to have to get the new Starfall Prophecy Warmonger gear and then work on that new gear. Uh, that's always what happens whenever it comes to expansions and stuff like that. You can't really complain about it because, you know, everybody's gear is going to change with the expansion and a level raise. So very, very cool. All right, so they're basically saying that all these changes is going to change PvP, PvP for the better, and everybody should be happier about it, and they'll continue to modify things as needed. There's going to be a lot of balance changes coming. They're always going to alter things uh, with the legendary abilities, uh, planar fragments, level cap. You know, all these things are going to factor into the balancing of uh, players, uh, the classes, I mean. So... Yeah, it's going to be uh, an ever-changing thing. They're going to try to tweak things as it goes along. So hopefully they'll be more on top of it than they were in Nightmare Tide. Because, like I said, Nightmare Tide was a disaster uh, for PvPers. So, yeah. Seems like a lot of cool stuff coming up. And it seems like things are going in the right direction. Finally. Finally. But there is a downside. Yes, there is a downside. And it's kind of something that we're going to look back on, but it's going to be disheartening all the same. 
All right, so at one point I talked to Ocho, and Ocho's very, very, you know, uh, straightforward with me for the most part. And, you know, he doesn't lie to me or anything like that. He, he, he basically tells me how it is, and he clears up a lot of stuff whenever I have questions, actually. Uh, you know, if I have a question about something, I don't really want to make a video and rant about it whenever I can ask him, and he can clear it up, and I go, okay, well, that just saved me a, a huge rant video about what I was going to say about PvP. Well, I talked to him one time, and I said, hey, everybody is complaining that raid gear is better than the warmonger gear that you can currently get. Is this true? I want to know the truth right now. And he said, well, yes and no. Because basically, it's supposed to be pretty balanced. You know, the warmonger gear and the down bolstering of raid gear is supposed to be about the same. Uh, now, it's not going to be exact. It, you know, of course, uh, this piece of gear that's from a raid may have... Uh, higher stats or whatever whereas this gear that you get from PvP is going to have higher attack power or something and you know they try to balance it out but it's not going to be a perfect thing so he's like it's supposed to be about the same and you know that's that okay answered he, he was saying if you find anything different be sure to bug report it we think that it should be right okay cool sounds great all right, so I kind of put that to rest, and I even made a video talking about if anybody finds any different proof to let me know, and I will try to forward it as, to as many people as I can. And, uh, but nobody got a hold of me. Nobody said that, you know, they had any real proof that raid gear was better than the PvP gear. Well, uh, in, a, in this same post line that was uh, done on the forums, Somebody talks about how raid gear was better than the PvP gear because whenever you swapped out your PvP weapons for raid weapons, your DPS and everything went up. And, uh, you know, that was not supposed to be the way it was, according to what Ocho had told me. Well, Ocho replied to this person on the forums and he said that that is because the warmonger, warmonger weapon is not at the top of the bolster ceiling it is not better than the raid weapon it is not even even with the raid weapon it is not meeting the ceiling whereas the raid weapon was so that is very disheartening i i'm you know ocho is really straightforward with me and he doesn't lie to my face i mean i i've i've talked so much with him i know better but Something tells me that he was corrected at some point and he, he told people how it was on the forums. And lo and behold, raid gear was better than PvP gear in Nightmare Tide. This just goes to show how terrible Nightmare Tide was for PvPers. How terrible. This is why Grimm was retired for almost all of Nightmare Tide. This is why you get all these new raid people are the new meta of PvP in Nightmare Tide. Oh. Alright. Frustration sets in. It's, you know... I don't know. It, it, it makes me feel like I'm correct in the way that I was. Why I was saying that Nightmare Time PvP wasn't fun. Uh, you know, everybody, uh, you know, criticized me saying I'm not a good PvPer. I'm not, you know, all these things because I wasn't playing in Nightmare Time. And whenever I did, I was always out geared and all that stuff. But Storm Legion time, you know, I was smashing everybody. And Starfall Prophecy, it looks like that may be the return of Grim. We'll see. All right, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Uh, it kind of has its ups and downs, you know, the frustration parts, the really good parts about what's coming up. The foreseeable future is really, really good. But looking back at Nightmare Tide, I'm just always shaking my head out of frustration and annoyance. And... I am really looking forward to future changes in the new expansion. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that like button. As usual, guys, my name is Grim, and I'll see you in the next video.